What's up guys, welcome back to the EAFC Chelsea career mode and today is a massive episode. It is 26 minutes long, roundabouts that, 26 minutes long. It is a jam-packed episode. As you guys do know, hit that like button, subscribe, the bell helps me a lot. Um, now we are up to 59 subscribers. I'm hoping to get maybe 65 by the end of September, so if you could hit that subscribe button, it will help me a lot. But um, as you guys know, the first episode we played decent. We have six points, I believe, from a possible nine. So we're playing quite good, and um, yeah, just then, I was just showing you guys real quickly um, that, you know, the stats of the players. Um, Mikhailo Mudrik with two assists. I really, really want um, him to get on the score sheet and so hopefully he can get himself on the score sheet and get a goal because, uh, yeah, he hasn't done so yet. Um, but as you guys do know, we started off with counter-attack and I just didn't like how um, I didn't like how it was going. Um, so I decided to change it to wing play because we do have two very fast wingers in Madaway, uh Mudrick sometimes, uh, we can rotate this as well, Palmer and Sterling, who obviously is very quick, as we know, um, but in the first game, we are going to be wasting no time at all, and we're going to be going into a game at home against Nottingham Forest, um, who only have one point from a possible nine in three matches, so... We're going to go ahead and look to get the win. Hopefully we do get the win because we're going to need these three points. As you guys know, Chelsea did lose this game in real life. So, yeah, it's going to be very important, this match here. Um, But we are starting with our... Not our strongest 11, but I have rotated a little bit. Like, as you guys know, Chuck Lameka is there. Um, in that cam position just to give Christopher and Kunku a little rest because he does get very tired pretty quickly. But, um, you know, the team's quite similar. Instead, we got Chuck Wameke. And, um, yeah, we got off to a flying start, you guys cannot lie, because we just piled up the pressure. You guys know Forest play a five back, so it's kind of hard to break through them, but once you get on them on a counter-attack, they only have three back because their two wing up wing backs go up very high, and it was a great piece of play. The Enzo Fernandez played at Chukwuemeka, and then Chukwuemeka first time pass to Jackson, and he got himself a goal. I believe that's his second or third goal this season so far, um, but also put us one nil up. Um, he had a very good chance here in a few minutes later, but. He, he literally just dived like a... I don't even know how high, how he got that high up in the air, but it was a great dive, great attempt, but couldn't get it on target. Next time, we'll just try and get it on target a bit more. But um, I couldn't believe how he missed this chance here. Um, he had a great chance, and he hit the post, and it, it sh well and truly should have been his second of the game, and it should have been 2-0 up at halftime, but... We only managed to stick with the 1-0 lead going to half time, but we're going to look to double that lead because we're going to need to double that lead because Forrest are going to come in this second half firing and trying to get a point from us because they, they probably can because they did take three points from Chelsea in real life, but this is FIFA, so this is a bit different. Um, they started very, very strongly off the mark. Um, you know, their wingers in Alanga and um, former Chelsea player Callum hudson um actually got himself a goal and made this game 1-1 back into it. Um, yeah, Alanga was just being a pain in the bum. We just couldn't contaminate him trying to stick him and maybe get a challenge in but we just weren't able to stick that challenge in and he was able to get the pass off and Hudson Doy was just free 
in the back stick to just tap the ball in to the back of the net. But um, yeah, we also had a very very good chance here with Chukwemeke, um, to take that shot. It was quite a poor cross, not gonna lie, from Sterling, but Mudrik could keep it back in play, and he saved that from going out of out into for a goal kick. But yeah, so we're gonna put. And Kunku back on um, to just give him some play time. I just put him for a little bit of rest. Uh, Sterling's coming on, and I'm gonna put on Mark Cucurella in that left back position. Haven't really given him a chance yet in the first three matches, but I will give him a chance now to see what they can prove and what what they can do, perhaps to impact in this game and if he should be a starter instead of. Um, too well, so yeah, I did think they were gonna. They did score, but fortunately enough, Ryan Yates was offside, and um, it allowed us to go on in on the other half with a great counter attack. Um, Nicholas Jackson just took it around the player, and he was just starting towards the goal. And in the 92nd minute of extra time, he was managed and did manage to smash one and rif absolutely rifled it in the top left hand corner past the forest goalkeeper don't quite know who that is but um yeah it was very good because he had great pace to take on that player and just dart towards goal um let me know in the comments section down below if you guys are up to this bit because i know a lot of people don't watch this long but let me know down below if you guys want me to sign a striker or not to replace him because he's only 78 rated. But, um, yeah, if he keeps on playing like this, he will get a massive improvement. So, yeah, very, very good performance by himself right there, Nicholas Jackson. But, um, yeah, overall, great team performance as well. So we can't, can't really blame anybody for anything yet because... We've just been playing very well right now. Um, so very good to see us get that 2-1 victory over Forest and get that not our ninth point of the season. Um, this time we're going to go in against Bournemouth. Um, this time it will be away. Um, so, you know, Bournemouth is a very hard stadium to go to. Very difficult because the crowd really gets behind Bournemouth's back and um, you know it's quite a challenge when you're going out there so but I believe in these boys these group of boys um, as you guys know Reese James is injured so yeah he's injured so Chilwell will be the man taking us out um, but yeah at the Vitality Stadium um, this time we're going to be wearing our away kit uh, hopefully Mudrick because he still hasn't got himself on the score sheet yet. Um, but, you know, Nicholas Jackson performing very well at the start of this. But, um, you know, Mudrick had a fantastic chance. I could not believe my eyes in that. In 15 minutes, he had a great chance. All he had to do was pass, pass up by the keeper anywhere but the keeper's face or chest. Um, but he's just smacked it right into his chest or whatever. But it was a great save from the keeper. Um, I don't know if he should be playing because he's a very, very good talent. But he just cannot find the back of the net. He needs much more of an impact for me if he was to be a starter. So maybe that's where we can go ahead and improve in the January transfer window. Yeah, Let me know in the comments down below if you guys have any suggestions in that left wing position because you know that Chelsea have spent a billion pounds so we do have like I think a hundred million to spend so let me know down below in the comments section if you guys know any other players that are good in that left wing position because if Mudrick just doesn't start performing start get a goal get a first goal of the season I'm sorry mate but he has to be dropped because it's, it's not really He's not really doing much. He's just he's got the two assists so far this season, which I'm happy pleased about. But we need him to get on the score sheet. So 
We'll see how we go throughout this whole episode. Um, if he can get himself on the score sheet, it will be beautiful. But Jackson, Nicholas Jackson, performing very well uh, in the last four or five games. This is his fifth game. Um, but, you know, Christopher Nkunku taking this one by storm, taking this game because he did score the first goal. It was a great goal. Um, probably should have made it the second just then. Should have been a 2-0 advantage to us. But, um, yeah, we just couldn't find... We just couldn't... In this second half, we just could not find the back of the net. I feel like it's just... Mikhailo Mudrik is just allergic to scoring goals because... He missed that wide open chance in the first half and just then again he just great run of play. He just cut inside. He does everything beautifully, just cannot get shot on target and get it into the back of the net. Um, like he has done in real life in pre in preseason. Just can't do it in league matches. I just really do think he's allergic to scoring goals, like just cannot believe my eyes. Um but yeah, this game finished one nil. Christopher Nkunku's only one to score in that match. Um, and, you know, he's been a great player. He's a great, very great player. Um, big player to miss out on for Chelsea as he is injured in real life. Um, but in this career mode, thank God he's not injured because, oh boy, if we had him injured, we would be playing, I don't even know who would be, play, be playing in that camp position. Maybe we might be looking in to buy a secondary cam because we know Nkunku is quite injury prone and I have adjusted the sliders up so they can get injured just so it's a bit more realistic but I don't want him injured for like a whole year like every single player but um yeah we want some difficulties um but a very interesting lineup here against to play against Aston Villa they have Martinez Diaby Paul Torres Zaniolo Dinge, Mac McGinn, and Leon Bailey, who I believe probably should all start in that match right there. But Uno Emery doing some tactics, so yeah, we're gonna have to let him let him deal with that because I was just shocked that Aston Villa were not playing their best goalkeeper, Emmy Martinez, won the World Cup, but they're playing their secondary goalkeeper. It's just crazy to me, but. You know, those players off the bench are quite good, and Aston Villa this year are quite a good team because they are quite a good dark horse team. Because if you guys do know, they are quite good in the Premier League, um, and in this career mode, they're quite good. But unfortunately, they don't. They're not playing their best players, so they're not going to get there. They're not going to be in at the top tape part of the table if they're not playing their best players. So. Interesting little bit from the AI. Um, I did get very scared because this youngster here, um, Duran, he, he's really quick and um, he had a quick little burst of space and he took it on, but luckily enough, Cole had a sliding charge to put him off and it did manage to put him off and he just took the shot out wide, but um, yeah. Um, we went on the other end, and 10 minutes in, this man just cannot stop scoring. He's just, he's the exact opposite of Mudrik. Mudrik can't get the ball in the back of the net. This guy cannot stop getting the ball into the back of the net. So, I love this guy so much. Um, came from Villarreal to Chelsea, so big, big expectations. And in this crew mode, he is performing. It was a lovely ball from Sterling from that right hand side and this guy's work rate is quite good as well as you guys can see he's going in for another counter attack and Nkunku probably should have got that goal but I, it was just offside very close if he stayed on side a bit more it would have been a 2-0 lead there but um, you know Nicholas Jackson absolute great striker to have on your team great mobile striker he's quick he's tall he's athletic so it's it's a striker that Chelsea need, but in real life, he needs to get some sense into him, and he needs to start scoring like he is in these games here, um, you know, getting a brace, a hat-trick, a goal each game to lift that Chelsea team up from the current 14th position from five, from six games they've played, 
They've only won once and fraud twice, which they have five points on the board. Very, very disappointing for Chelsea fans. Like, I would not want to be a Chelsea fan right now. Um, luckily, I am not because, yeah, I don't want to be suffering through that. But Christopher Nkunku gets just a little, little glimpse of space. Um, Sterling, first time passing, Caicedo gets his first assist of the season, just on the stretch taps it to Nkunku and all he needs is one little, um, one little chance and he's got that ball into the back of the net, you already know, um, so, yeah, in the second half we were dominating Aston Villa as we know, um, because their players were, all their good players were out on the bench, so could be due to fitness because their uh, team quite is quite run down. So it could be due to that. But uh, you know, Emery just you know he's got his tactics. So we're gonna have to see how it goes for that. Okay, so we go into this second half, two 0 up, uh, quite comfortably to be honest. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can just see the second half out, and hopefully. You know, keep a clean sheet because we I don't think we've only kept one clean sheet, I believe, um, so far this season. So we'd probably want to keep a bit more. Um, Sanchez will definitely want to keep a lot more clean clean sheets um, himself. So yeah, as you guys see here, we are preparing a few substitutions. Um, Lavia is going to come on for. He's actually, I'm not going to put on Lavia just yet. I'm only going to put, um, I'm going to take off Mikala Madrid for Oli Palmer. Um, just for, just because we need maybe a bit more fresh legs. But, um, here, I just didn't know what was going on. There was a corner for Aston Villa. The ball came in, and for some reason, he just, Sanchez just tapped it up and. It was just so confusing, I've got no idea what happened. We'll see here, a replay again. And then Sanchez was still on the floor. And Leon Bailey wins that header over Gusto. So makes it 2 1. So Villa are still in this game. So we've got to maybe score one more to see this game out fully. And to get the 3 1 victory and move on to the next match. But. It's not going to be as smooth, but it doesn't really matter because the main man up top, Nicholas Jackson, can not catch a break. He is the main man. He is just so good at scoring goals. He just cannot stop scoring goals. And you know that's just that's just a good thing if you have a striker so eager to go in. Such a good striker. Um, the one thing I don't really love about him is that he's 79 rating. I mean, if he keeps the form up, he will definitely be going up by rating, most definitely. But, um, you know, so I'd like to maybe, if you guys want, we can sign a more experienced striker because we don't really have anybody up, like alongside him competing for that number nine spot, except for Alamanda Broja. So... I'm not quite sure yet who, but leave me in the comment section down below um, who, who, if you guys have any suggestions. Um, but yeah, Aston Villa are going to push us to the limits um, to make it 3-2 in around the 80th minute um, with only 10 minutes or so to go. So we're just going to try and see this game out. No risky business, as you guys can see in the last two or so minutes. I was just playing around with it at the back, keeping possession. Um, yeah, don't lose the ball in these areas. It would just be very key. Um, I was going to go for another counter-attack, but ref thought otherwise. So, But it doesn't really matter because we did get a good win. Also, a very, very good three points. Again, Nicholas Jackson with a brace. This guy, just I just love him to bits. He's just such an exciting youngster in real life as well. So, even though I'm not a Chelsea fan, he just excites me whenever I watch Chelsea. 
Uh, to be fair, I don't really watch Chelsea that much, but whenever he's on, I just look forward because I just really want him to do well because he's such a good youngster and we don't have many of these Senegalese great players. So I just want like these little countries to, you know, shine up and do some stuff. But um, in objectives, we haven't really done much in objectives. Um, so I'm going to show you, we're going to have to get 10 wins in the league. That's just a joke. Um, EA, what are you doing? We are obviously getting 10 wins in the league. Uh, we've already got five. We're going to have to sign three players born in Europe. So let me know in the comment section down below if you know any three players that have been born in Europe. They also want us to finish in the UEFA Champions League spot. So they want us to get top four and also to win the FA Cup. I don't know if we'll be able to do it with this squad. Maybe next season. But um, also they want us um, within two seasons to increase our club net worth by 15%. So that will definitely have to be done by winning trophies or getting really far on in the competition in Champions League. But as you guys know, we don't have any Champions League. So we're really focusing on maybe... Um, Definitely not the Carabao Cup, that's why I've gone full second team in, in this game here against Newcastle, who have gone strong team, and they absolutely thrashed us 3-0. Um, they absolutely smoked our second team, but what are you going to do? Uh, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to focus on the FA Cup play. I'm going to be playing some matches in the FA Cup, so don't you worry. Um, I've had two names um, on the transfer list. Um, Anas you know, and I'm just going to say his last name, Elmas. Anas you know, and Elmas. Um, this guy is Turkish, and the other guy is from North Macedonia. I want a backup for Nkunku, so let me know down in the comment section down below if you guys have any suggestions. And I want a, someone who is competing the number nine spot with Nicholas Jackson, because I think I just need to push him a bit more. If he wants to be a very, very good player. So, yeah. Next game, we are going to the Craven Cottage. Um, it's 8pm, late, very late kickoff. Um, it's at night, so the beams will be shining down on us. And hopefully we can get another three points on the road at the Craven Cottage. And, yeah. Hopefully we do not somehow end up losing this one. Um, on the current form, we've been playing quite good, so you'd, the odds are with us, so you'd probably expect us to win this match, but never know, um, Wesley Fofana's going to take us out to Craven Cottage, and yeah, hopefully get the three points and get the job done quick and nice and smoothly over here. Um, also... The injury update on Reese James. He's still injured, um, but hopefully we will be. He'll be back by maybe late next episode, maybe in episode four. So yeah, he's gonna. He's injured for quite a long time, but we get the dream start with Ram Sterling with five minutes only in. Um, we run it down the right hand side and absolutely smash it into the bottom corner. Sterling just outbeats the Fulham defence. Um, former Chelsea player, Willian, Brazilian, um, tracking back, but we caught them off guard, and it was a very, very good start for us, so very pleased to see uh, a great quick start. Sterling get on, getting on the score sheet now, so very, very good to see. Um, we also had another great chance here. Sterling have a, having a wonder of a game. Uh, lobs it into Nicholas Jackson and he got the header, but it just. Diop was way too close to him and just headed it off his head um, out for a corner, but we didn't get anything special from the corner. Nothing really happened. Um, Fulham now decided to turn to Jets on. They did get a lot of luck there, as you guys can see the rebound. Um, rebounded straight to Jimenez. Uh, this guy was, I think he was going for a shot. Definitely went for a shot. It rebounded straight to Jimenez. And he was at the right place at the right time to get the goal and make the game level with 
still a long, long time to go. Um, yeah. So, Fulham just at home are just different breed because they just they just kept on going. You know, they did not stop. They could have made it easily two one there. They could have been at the break. They could have been a goal up definitely. So could have we. So um, yeah. They were definitely towards the back end of the half. They were definitely the better team. Um, so yeah. We gotta we gotta up our game in the second half so we don't lose or draw. To be honest, I will take a draw at Craven Cottage, but with the recent form, I'm only looking for wins because uh, this might be a big ask, but we might try and push to get. We'll we'll, we'll definitely I'll try and definitely get top four because that's what we're gonna try and do. Um, but yeah. Second half, it wasn't the best of starts for us, but um, sort of around the 67th minute, 70th minute mark, we did get the goal to take us 2-1 up. Nicholas Jackson, once again, had a few chances in the first half, didn't take him. Second half comes upon him, and he takes it, and it was a fantastic goal. Took it around the keeper and absolutely smashed it, but, yeah, unfortunately for us, only three or so minutes later, Lukic, the Serbian midfielder, I believe he is, um, rifles one into the back of the net. Again, our defence is sleeping, and I don't really know what was happening because not too much longer later on, they did score, and once again, they just the defence was stepping up so high. For some reason, we were playing such a high line, and... They managed to make it 3-2 in the 78th minute with 12 minutes to go. So, I don't know, Raul Jimenez with a great explosive touch and just rifles it past Sanchez, who couldn't really do much there. And I thought, that's it, we're going to have to gonna have to make some changes because something's just not working here. Mudrik, once again, cannot get on the score sheet. Caicedo having quite a bad game. Um, you know, Sterling had a good game, but probably one of the best players out there on the pitch. But, you know, Raul Jimenez has already got two goals, so he's rifled two past Sanchez. We're going to have to somehow make a comeback with 10 minutes left or equalise this game with 10 minutes left. But, yeah, unfortunately for us, that was not meant to happen because... Fulham were just the better team in the second half. It was 1-1 at halftime and they managed to score. They outscored us. Our defence just wasn't, just I don't know what was going on. It just wasn't a great game for us. Um, Gusto, I'm not sure what you're doing there, buddy. You're a backup left back to Reese James. And he's just standing there. Sanchez trying to make a great save and Gusto gets the own goal because he just rebounds straight past him. Um, don't know what he was doing, he was just standing there, but, um, yeah. And to make our goal difference even worse, to make our day even worse, to make... To Tim Reid from a free kick, it was just so silly. Uh, I tried to clear the ball out, whips it in, and Tim Reid headers that one into the back of the net and makes it 5-2, and the game finished just like that. I just... I was blown away with our defence. Our defence was that bad. I just, I didn't know what to do. And, um, I don't know. First half, we were looking so great. But, um, second half, Fulham were just the much better side. And you've got to give credit to them. But, um, the Gusto, Gusto, I should say, own goal, really let us down there in the 86th minute to make a 4-2 we were still into that game until he made a bad mistake. Um, so far through the season, Nicholas Jackson has six goals. Sterling has three. Same as in Kunku. But Mudrik still can't get off that um, bad start. Seven appearances, zero goals, two assists. So I am trying to, I am, I'm going to put a development plan on him and try and boost him up as much as I can. But if you guys did enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe with the bell. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care and peace out.